I'm going to get you to take a look at this period from February 16th to February 20th. What I will add is that shortly after the cardiac cath, mm -hmm. I had severe shortness of breath at rest. Mm -hmm. okay. Breathing in, nothing okay. happening, uh, which was reported to medical staff. The next day on the 17th, acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema was diagnosed. Okay. It, it wasn't actually disclosed at the time. One thing they did in advance of cardiac cath, they arranged the BUN to CR mm -hmm. daily blood tests. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'll let you guess what complications were extant going into surgery on the 20th. Yeah, surgery on the 20th. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we had really climbs. You had worsening renal function, although the creatinine yeah. climbs to a lesser extent. So I don't know why you'd go into cardiogenic edema after the cath. Did they do a left ventriculogram when you did that? They report on your cath report, did they report a, a pressure gradient? Can I, can I see yeah. the cath report one more time? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I'm just wondering if they, if they, if they intervened on your... Um, pressure reading. Um, what I was looking for is this. So they did put, they actually did instrument your left ventricle. That would be the mechanism where your aortic valve could have been injured for sure. Yeah. And so if my aortic valve was ruptured, my yeah. lungs would fill with fluid yeah, quite rapidly. Yep. And then that would trigger spikes in the UNCR. That would fit. I'd be into that place now mm. where not many people have been and I was there for four days mm. and let me tell That's you true. it's unbelievable this wasn't a subtle thing obviously I went from bouncing said. around like like I am now you, you were well before you said to incapacitated yeah. not able to move yeah. and he was watching it happen for four days yeah that's terrible what you went through that's terrible you know that's brutal <laughs> you get worse after your surgery the instrument of your LV you don't have to go through the other file Damage to the aortic valve and acute worsening. If anybody's going to have that problem, it would be you. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, you had a you had a pre-existing uh, aortic valve abnormality with a flail yeah. leaflet. The BNP uh, pre-procedure is extremely high. That's something you see with funny valve lesions. It sort of puts you at high risk for developing heart failure, which we kind of I guess. I guess new, but but they should have warned me of the yeah. risk ahead of time. They had responsibility, yeah. or, or at least said we're going to do this, or we yeah. want to do this. Looking at the numbers, you tell me your blood pressure is low, you're in shock. I mean, it would fit with the aortic valve being damaged at the time of the catheter. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know how you could say it wasn't acute aortic regurgitation. They have an X-ray, but if they hadn't, they would have heard it listening to your lungs. They should have just come and told you you're getting worse and discussed why they thought that might be. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they should have told you and said we need to do surgery now for this reason. They actually misrepresented it. They claimed it was psychiatric by withholding the diagnosis yeah. that they were surreptitiously tracking, so it was very sneaky. That's terrible. Yeah. Complications happen, but you have to yeah. be transparent. Or what do you do? You know, I'm sorry this has happened. I've been worse by the angiogram. You know, I've been in surgery now. And, you know, the disclosure probably would have saved everybody a lot of trouble, you know.